Hey Gen Zers, this is Mackenzie Amix with today's Gen Z with Mackenzie, and today I'm joined by Daisy Jing, who is a YouTuber and the founder of Banished Beauty. Welcome, Daisy. Thank you, Mackenzie. So tell us about the Banish Beauty skincare um, products. It was founded on your struggle and eventual win over acne. And tell us a little bit about your acne journey. Yeah, so I've had acne all my life since I was 10 years old. I tried everything for my acne, um, pills, prescription teas, everything, and nothing seemed to work for my skin. Um, and it actually caused me to be really depressed um, when you have acne like that and you're 13 years old and everyone's teasing you about it. It really affects your self-confidence. So um, that was something that I felt like a lot of, you know, that was something that always stuck with me, just the self-confidence issue of having acne, not only just the actual skin clearing up, but the confidence and loving yourself, even if you have acne or not, because I felt like my mood would depend on, am I getting a pimple today or am I not? Absolutely. Yeah. I totally get it. And I think a lot of Gen Z, especially we're in this period. And I know I always struggle with acne, especially right now in my life, which is totally normal, but having acne really affects your mood. And like you said, when you wake up and your skin is not good, your day is kind of not as good as it could be. Um, and I can't imagine just growing up like that and kind of just feeling constantly self-conscious about your skin. I totally get it. So you tried everything and tell us what, what worked or how did you finally come to realize what worked for you personally? Yeah, so uh, I tried everything and nothing worked. It actually made it worse. And currently a lot of the over-the-counter acne products, how they treat acne is they basically dry out your skin completely. So there's no oil. Mm -hmm. um, but a lot of times, sometimes your skin will produce more oil to overcompensate for that. It's kind of like if you wash your hair too much, you notice it gets greasier and greasier. So that wasn't working for me. Um, and so I actually switched and did a more natural remedy. I bought my products from health food stores. I made some of my own skincare products. And then I noticed my skin began to clear up immensely. Um, and I had this all on my YouTube channel. So I documented all on my YouTube channel and people were like, Daisy, what are you using for your skin? What happened to your acne? What happened to your acne scars? And I realized it was, you know, just changing my whole routine and the skincare products. I was using instead of from the conventional skincare to the stuff I sourced myself, the ingredients I sourced myself, um, and the products I made myself, I realized, oh my gosh, it's actually working. So that was the big change. And then people were like, Daisy, I want to, whatever you're doing, it's working. Let me try some of it. And that's how Banish started. So it, I always emphasize that everything started by accident. Um, I just wanted to solve a problem that would help my skin and ensure people wanted to try it out. That's awesome. And I think definitely you said you pivoted your entire routine from using these over-counter medications with a lot of chemicals, harsh ingredients that just dry out your skin to using more natural remedies. So when did you start using more natural home remedies and kind of making your own things? And what did you start out with? Yeah. So can you hear my phone? I'm sorry. No. <laughs> Um, sorry, my phone's ringing. <laughs> um, so I, I started with, um, just really stopping, stopping the use of these harsh drying ingredients and stopping taking all the pills and stuff like that. So, um, one thing was like benzoyl peroxide that was very, very harsh on my skin and they give you, you know, 10% benzoyl peroxide. It was so harsh. It would bleach my hair and my sheets and my towels. And I mean, you think about it actually bleaching, like, I'm so sorry. I'm going to turn off my phone. Just... Okay. <laughs> okay. Sorry about that. I'm sure it's totally you fine. can do you want me to re post, 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 post production. I yeah, for sure. <laughs> don't oh, worry. My phone is on airplane. Why does it keep calling? <laughs> I totally get it. Don't worry about it. Here, I'll turn off Wi-Fi. There you go. Okay. okay. So I'm just going to ask the question again, if you don't mind. Yeah. Okay. So um, when you started using these home remedies and kind of pivoting your entire skincare routine, what did you start out with and how soon did you notice your skin starting to change and clear up? Um, I would say within a few months. So I 
you know, just stopped using all of the harsh ingredients. I mentioned benzoyl peroxide. That was a very, very harsh ingredient on my skin. It kind of bleaches uh, the towels, the sheets, the hairs, the hair on my, you know, I would get highlights around my face um, from the benzoyl peroxide. So I kind of eliminated that. And then I would just focus on cleaning my skin gently with a gentle cleanser, but not like, <clears throat> not using a lot of brushes or a lot of like toners or a lot of um, scrubbers or physical like, uh, uh, physical exfoliants, like, you know, there's walnut shell powder and just things that can really scar and scratch the skin. I just eliminated all of that. Um, and then I actually focused on microneedling with a vitamin C component. So I actually did that on my own. And then I would say within a couple months, my skin, um, my skin started to, the, the acne scar started to go away and my skin started to clear up. And I actually didn't really realize this until people on my YouTube channel started commenting um, and people around me started commenting. Cause I was always like for the past 10 years, I, no one has ever said anything good about my skin. I never got any positive feedback. Um, so I wasn't really thinking like anything was going to change. Uh, but then it was when people on YouTube started commenting and then I realized, Oh my gosh, like, my skin's getting better than people around me started commenting. And for the first time in my life, I, I remember going to a dermatologist or a doctor and I said like, yeah, I'm here for my skin. They're like, Oh yeah, really great skin. And I was like, what? I've never heard that before. You know? So the comments, positive comments started flooding in about my skin, which is really weird for me to hear. Um, but yeah, it took a, it took a few months, but I honestly wasn't thinking that it was going to do anything. It was people just telling me that it helped. That's awesome. And that's kind of crazy that you were able to kind of accidentally stumble upon that, that secret to your skin personally. So mm -hmm. when it comes yeah. to Banish and the skincare, what is your guys' personal motto when it comes to skincare and the products you guys release? So our personal motto is always about focusing on the actual efficacy of the product and not about the packaging, not about how it feels, how it smells, you know, all the icing on the cake stuff. We're focusing on the foundation of the skincare product. So every single ingredient that we have is like very carefully scrutinized. Like, do we need this ingredient or do we don't? And I always say less is more. Um, if it has a probability of irritating you, causing you to break out, let's take it out. Um, and I know a lot of skincare companies, it's not about less is more. It's about, can we create the sexiest product or can we create the product that stands out and looks really good on social media or, you know, has really amazing packaging or smells amazing, you know, and those, those products can work for people who don't have problematic skin. But if you have problematic skin, like I do, I mean, you cannot use any of that. So um, we're very, very much ingredient based. If you read on our ingredient list, you, you know, I mean, you can pretty much pronounce most of the ingredients. Um, most of our products have an organic aloe vera leaf juice on them, which is amazing for the skin. Aloe vera is really, really good for the skin. Um, but, you know, other brands will have like a mineral oil or a propylene glycol as a base for their products. So we just come from it from a more natural perspective. Um, we really scrutinize every ingredient. We don't have any alcohol, no artificial fragrance, no artificial colors, whatnot in our products. And our products are very, very clean. And they're also fresh. So I always say like, because our products are shipped and made out, the next day you order, um, if you leave your banished products out for six months, they're going to change because they are fresh products. Whereas other skincare, if you leave it out for, you know, five years, it won't change at all. And I make that analogy of like the McDonald's hamburger. If you leave out a McDonald's hamburger over 10 years, it's still going to look the same, right? Because they put so much artificial stuff on it. It's not actual, you know, real food. Yeah. Um, so our products are real, like they're real they're fresh. We think of it more like a restaurant, um, you know, made fresh to order. And so because of that, there's a lot fewer preservatives. There's a lot fewer ingredients to make it last longer. And therefore your skin will probably not react um, if you do have very sensitive skin. Absolutely. And I think that's really interesting and awesome that you guys chose to focus on really creating substantial products rather than all the fluff um, of packaging, pretty packaging and beautiful kind of aesthetics and fragrance and whatnot, but I think definitely kind of getting down and boiling it down to the very basis, really making sure that things are effective. So in terms of efficacy and how effective your products are, what did you guys, how did you guys formulate these products and did you work with scientists, dermatologists to come up with these products? 
Yeah, so I actually wanted to be a dermatologist um, when I was in college, so I took all their pre-chemistry courses. Um, so I did have some background in that. And then I also shadowed with um, dermatologists too, because I, I, I wanted to be a dermatologist uh, because I had acne. And that's why I decided to go to uh, Duke University because they had a great pre-med program and stuff. Um, in terms of actual formulating the products, because I had struggled with my skin for over 10 years and I made so many YouTube videos, I was just very, very obsessed with, you know, researching ingredients and going on um, WebMD or PubMD and just like looking at all the stuff and then also trying to find the right suppliers for the ingredients. So I think it's very important to know that it's not just the ingredient that you're purchasing, but also the supplier that you're purchasing it from, uh, right? Because, um, I mean, if you think about purchasing, you know, vitamins, like you need to purchase from different suppliers, right? One vitamin just because it's this kind of vitamin doesn't mean it's um, different than a different kind of vitamin you buy from a different supplier. So I think it's also really important that you buy the quality of the product. Um, people are so focused on just the name and the ingredient, the percentage, but I think the quality is also very, very important. And um, and yeah, and so it just started with one product, um, the Banish Kit, and then it kind of grew from there. And uh, we have worked with different you know suppliers and chemists and stuff. Um, but I'm very, very, very picky. So, you know, sometimes they'll send me uh, 50, 60, 70 different samples, formulations, and I just say, eh, I don't love it that Good. much to sell it. Yeah. Sure. And I think it's kind of important for you as the founder to be very kind of meticulous about what you choose. So I think that's definitely a wise decision. So kind of pivoting, pivoting a little bit to, I know you mentioned you struggled with acne for over 10 years and you started getting it very young. Um, can you go into a little bit about that and how it affected your confidence? At your lowest point, what would you tell yourself when you were younger and kind of struggling with your self-confidence the most? Yeah, at my lowest point, what I would tell myself younger is that first and foremost, skin is always going to change. So just because your skin is going to clear up, there's going to be other issues. For example, having acne scars and trying to figure out you know, how to get rid of those acne scars. But also you know, as you get older, your skin is going to change too. And you're going to notice, you know, fine lines and wrinkles. And if you're always comparing your skin against the standard of perfection, you'll never be happy. So realizing um, it comes and goes and um, you should never base your self-worth on something so external like your skin or anything else in life. Absolutely. Uh, and then I'd also, oh, yeah. Oh no, go ahead. Oh, and I mean, I mean, I know that's so easy to say like, oh, be confident, right? Like that's so easy. And then I think for more of a tactical, practical thing is to focus on things you love about yourself. So instead of me focusing all the time on trying to fix my skin, I wish I spent more time, you know, with like hairstyles because, you know, I really like my hair um, or different like, you know, lip color looks because I really like, you know, my lips or something like that, right? Mm -hmm. um, instead of focusing on something very negative, focusing on something positive I love about myself to be more confident. Mm -hmm. And I think that's really good advice and it's very solid. And even just to start small, like you said, focusing on the positives. And the first thing you said, um, kind of knowing that external factors and your physical appearance doesn't measure your worth. I think that's definitely easier said than done. And I know a lot of young Gen Zs really struggle with self-worth and self-confidence, especially growing up surrounded by social media and growing up in the internet. And I know you started making YouTube videos. So kind of being in that public eye can really be quite taxing in terms of comparison. And just only recently, people are starting to be more honest and open about their skin, being real about their bodies. And I think that's really important. So, um, I think definitely the advice of knowing that it doesn't measure your worth and also trying to focus on positive things about yourself is very helpful. Um, and how do you feel like your self-confidence has changed over the past five, 10 years? Oh, I'm so much more confident. I mean, if you were to tell me this, I would be CEO of a multi-million dollar business and, you know, just being interviewed by people like you and all this stuff, like I'd have been like, no, you're like, this is a joke, right? Um, I think the biggest thing that has helped me with my confidence is focusing on helping other people. Uh, when you focus on helping other people, and I mean, even running a business, you're focusing on helping other people. You're helping your employees, you're helping your customers. Like you're always helping, you know, others. Uh, 
if you're focused on that, you really have no time to look at yourself and you have no time to scrutinize yourself. You have no time to criticize or nitpick yourself or be negative about yourself. So I would say, you know, to be confident, like go and volunteer somewhere or go help other people. Just put the focus on them. Like they don't really care about you. No offense. Like nobody really cares about you, but they care about themselves. So go help them. And it'll really, really help your confidence. Um, and because I've been doing that for so long and because I've been so busy running this company, um, busy, you know, helping our customers, our employees, our team, our suppliers, our vendors, everyone, my confidence just shot up through the roof because I realized that I am so much, I have so much more to offer than just the Absolutely. way I look. Right. Definitely. I mean, I mean, I would say, you know, when I was struggling with acne, there was absolutely no way I would go out without makeup. Like I remember when I wanted to work out in college, I put on literally 10, 10 layers of stuff on my face. Cause I was afraid that if I was sweating, then my acne would show through. And I was so terrified of, you know, being in public without makeup. And now I rarely wear makeup, you know? So um, just, it's, it's a night and day difference. And so, yeah, taking the focus out of yourself and helping other people will help your confidence immensely. Absolutely. And I think when we kind of inwardly focus on ourselves, and I know in quarantine, we've had a lot of time for yep. <laughs> self-reflection, maybe too much self-reflection, but yeah, definitely. And I think it's awesome that you were able to take a personal struggle and be so real with your audience and your customers, and also just to be able to share and um, help others with what you've learned. And I think that's really awesome. So final question. Um, what are just a couple skincare tips, like very, very crucial things that you wish you had learned earlier? Okay. Number one, read the ingredients of skincare. Um, the reviews, it, I mean, it can be helpful, but you know, your skin is so different than everyone else's skin. And especially if you're like me and break out towards everything, most things are not going to work for you. So when you're trying to buy skincare, read through the ingredients and see if there's stuff that might irritate your skin. Um, and don't really look at marketing and reviews, like figure out what works for you and kind of stick with it. Right. Um, the second thing is less is definitely more. And I know that's so cliche and I, I don't like saying that, but I mean, the whole 10 step Korean skincare routine, like, yes, it might work for some people, but for someone like me, I cannot have that many products on my skin at once. So don't think more is going to help your skin, especially if you have acne prone skin or problematic skin. I know you just want to scrub everything off. You want to make sure it's super clean. That's going to make it worse. It's going to irritate your skin. So try maybe just doing nothing, you know, for a month or something like just the very, very basic and see how your skin reacts. It might actually be better than doing all of the stuff to your skin. Right. Um, and then the third thing is, you know, definitely environmental factors come into play. So, you know, diet, exercise, uh, stress, um, hygiene, all of that, um, can come into place. I think air is also very important. Air, your environment, um, you know, the moisture in your environment. So get things like a humidifier, you know. Um, I always have a humidifier uh, with distilled water in there. I also drink a certain type of water. I don't drink the water out of my tap because I'm very, very sensitive to things like that. Um, and then I also have an air filter, you know, in my bedroom. So those things will help my skin, right? And I've noticed that when I go to a different environment or, you know, pre-COVID, when I would travel to a certain environment, my skin would start breaking out. So also think about environmental factors. Um, think about diet. Sometimes people going vegan has helped their acne or cutting out certain sugars has helped their acne. Uh, so it's not just all about skincare. I think we think having bad skin equals skincare. Skincare equals, you know, skin. Mm -hmm. Skincare is only a little bit of it. You know, there's a lot of other factors and we have to take a holistic look at our skin. For sure. And definitely um, more internal factors, like, like you said, your diet and everything that kind of manifests itself onto your skin. So I think that's really important to kind of remember. Well, um, actually, I do have one more question for you. Yeah. <laughs> so I can't imagine running this huge business, kind of um, just trying to juggle everything in your life and being an entrepreneur. Um, what do you do to kind of de-stress yourself and take care of your mental health on a daily basis? Yeah. So uh, going off with that, I also gave birth eight months ago. <laughs> so Whoa. being a mom, a mom and all that. Yeah. Thank you. I was hoping she wasn't going to be like crying. I don't know if you heard <laughs> um, yeah. <laughs> so 
honestly, I don't think there's like a way to de-stress. I know people are like, oh, self-care, work-life balance. There's no such thing. If you're an entrepreneur, there's no such thing as work-life balance. It's 24 seven. Even when I sleep, I wake up in the middle of the night, like, oh my gosh, I forgot to do something. Right. I think what's most important is for you to be authentic in whatever it is that you're doing. I think the reason why people get burnt out is because they're doing something that isn't authentic to them. So um, the times I felt really, you know, a lot of anxiety, a lot of stress, a lot of burnout was when I was doing things that didn't resonate with me. Um, and so once I stopped doing those things, like the stress went away. And so it wasn't necessarily about the amount of work I had. It was just about, um, do I align with whatever it is that we're doing? So I would highly recommend that because I feel like there's a lot of pressure, especially for women to have work-life balance and, you know, like have balance and there's no such thing, right? There's no such thing. Um, and I think we put a lot of stress on ourselves to have balance, right? Um, sometimes I freak out if I don't have balance or I freak out if I'm not spending enough time here and there. Uh, but I think as long as I'm present as, and as long as I'm authentic, then I don't feel as stressed. Um, and for tactical situations, I think exercise is really important and just getting outside. I know during COVID, it's been really hard. And it was really hard in the beginning of COVID because I just wouldn't leave the house. But now what I do is right when I wake up, I don't even think about it. I wake up um, and I take my daughter out and we go for a walk outside and just immediately it just makes me feel better. The sun, um, some exercise really sets the mood to my day. So if you can just get a start to your day and not think about it, <laughs> if you want to do something or not like exercise, it really, really changes the course and your perspective of your day. Definitely. Well, thank you so much for sharing today. Today, I've been joined by Daisy Jing, who is a YouTuber and the founder of Banish Beauty. Thank you for being here with me today. Thanks, Mackenzie.